it stretches the idea of a midsize almost to the breaking point. Our test model was the all-wheel drive V6 version. Under the hood was a 3.7 liter Ford steel power plant. It delivers 300 horsepower and 277 foot-pounds of torque. Highway fuel economy is in the mid-twenties for the unit that tips the scales at just over two tons. The good news is even with a 10.5 to 1 compression ratio, it still operates on 87 octane unleaded fuel. The transaxle is a six-speed gearbox, but look ma, no levers or gear shifts. In a throwback to the technology of the late 1950s, it's all push-button affair. Thankfully, it's a drive-by-wire system rather than the clunky linkage used in the original versions from Detroit. Our overall driving impressions were that it's a competent but not overwhelming luxury experience. The interior offers a top-of-the-line experience from Ford with a near buttonless dashboard, the obligatory sync system, and even a touchscreen control for power seat massages for front seat passengers only. We were disappointed to find manual adjustments for the steering wheel where competitors offer a power option. The rear seat is adequate for adults but seems almost pedestrian compared to the comfort level up front. We will give the design good marks for installing an AC power outlet in the second row. What we are still confused about is the panoramic moonroof, which creates a large opening when engaged, but also impedes what a driver sees in the rear view mirror when fully open. The MKZ has evolved into a better vehicle from its initial offering of a few years ago, but it's still not a platform that makes luxury buyers say, wow, at least not yet. This is Greg Morrison. We want to know what you think, so email us. The address is bumper to bumper TV at cs.com.